Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, and this is episode 880. Hope everyone is doing well, staying safe, of course. Um, it's a beautiful night. I'm outside. Decided to come out. Um, everything else is, is cool, just regular. You know, phones are slow. Nothing's ringing. Um, I'm getting a lot of writing done. I know a few, years are, uh, a few of you are checking out my TikTok, so it's just a little something for me to break away from the craziness going on in this world. Um, kind of can't wait for, can't wait for this to be over. I really, you know, I'm just a very productive guy. And anything that kind of slows me down or, you know, puts me at any kind of a halt, uh, uh, it just kind of drives me a little crazy. So, and then, you know, I, I kind of figured, oh, you know what, I could deal with this, you know, but... I could, I'm going to deal with it, that's not the point, but what I'm saying is like, I can already see, you know, how this could, uh, how this can mess with people, you know, so, um, I'm getting a lot of writing done though, yes, yes, yours, I'm almost there, I got a couple more days to complete it, uh, well, to complete at least the um, Kindle version, so, um, so I could get that up, and then I have to go back and just kind of reformat for the for the paperback, and um, I should be good to go with that. Um, you guys are the first ones to find out, but I'm going to be releasing. I don't know exactly when I'm going to release uh, free copies of my Kindle version of Freestyle for Life. So if you guys have never read that, it might be a good time. This might be a since. Most of us are on some sort of lockdown, even if it's voluntary lockdown. Um, you might want to check it out. You know, the book's been around for quite a while. It's basically a, a freestyle cult classic at this point. Um, great story. Um, I think you'll I think you'll enjoy it. And I'm gonna give it to everybody, anybody who who wants it for free. Um, Amazon's only gonna allow me to uh, make it available for. I think five days. I don't even think they give me seven days like the whole week. I think it's only five. I think it's increments of five days. I don't know how many times, like like every three weeks or every six weeks, something like that. I don't know. I got to check it out. But um, I'll figure it out. I'll do a video and um, to announce it uh, just so people can come in. There's no strings attached. I'm not looking for reviews. It's not tied into any purchases. It's not a shameless plug. It's just... Uh, uh, I think a great time for me to just, you know, give the book out, you know, and give, give people, you know, just another way of experiencing freestyle since we can't exp experience it with shows at this point, you know. So uh, I think that'd be be pretty cool. And I hope people take advantage and, and check it out, you know. Um, and that's why I wrote the book. You know, I wrote the book for people to enjoy it. And uh, it wasn't about money or, you know, getting rich with, as an author that's a that's a hell of a task to do that <laughs> you know um my main object objective of writing but basically anything i do so anything from my videos to my my vlogs to my podcast to um is to somehow some way move people if i can move you that's what I that's what I'm looking for that's what I'm I'm desiring whether it's something that I say or you know that you know maybe inspires you or has you thinking or makes you feel that you're not the only one um that's what I'm, that's what I mean you know and I, I like to do that and as far as with the books um to show you know that you know people have issues and the world is a little crazy and our, our world is not the only crazy world, meaning individual, our individual worlds are not the only crazy worlds. that these worlds are crazy that we all share something in common. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so that's what that's what I'm looking for. 
for, you know. But uh um yeah, shows are gonna be I'm I'm trying to wonder, you know, when are these shows gonna happen again? Like I'm trying to think, you know, I know we got some stuff coming up in June and July. Let me see, we're in March. We're almost at the end of March. April, May, June. That's, that's like three months. So, hmm, that's that's a little bit of a that's a bit of a journey, <laughs> you know. So, uh, uh, yeah. So, um, but I'm I'm kind of kind of looking forward to hitting the road again. I mean, we just we did the Texas show. We did that double uh, with Caroline. Uh, she got sick, and um, I was pretty much after that double. I was pretty much ready to come home and just kind of chill out for a week or two. And <clears throat> I think when I know I have a show coming up, I'm, I'm like I could really suck in the week or two. Uh, but now, since there's like it's kind of indefinite, like we don't know what's gonna happen. We don't know how long this is gonna be. Ah, uh, this it kind of starts to mess with me a little bit, you know. Uh, I miss it. I miss uh, being on the road. You know, and having things back to normal. Um, I'm sure that there's other people out there, especially the artists. You know, I'm a booking agent. I know a lot of the issues that some of these artists are having. I'm talking about financially. And I, I kind of, I, I sympathize with a lot of them. I really do because I know what they're up against. I know the situation that they are probably already facing. You know, and it's... It's sad, you know, this is my community. I'm talking about, yeah, you know, for the whole world, but you know, I'm talking about my community, the freestyle community. You know, this is the the genre that I've been living off of for many years, you know. This is the genre where that put me together with my with my wife and basically gave me everything I have. So, um, you know, they talk they talk about with this virus that the 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 the, the weak are the ones that will be affected. But you know what? I don't think it's just the weak in body and health, but also the, the weak in, in financials. And a lot of the freestyle artists, this is their soul bread and butter. Like this is how they pay their bills. This is how they eat. This is how they take care of their families. So so you can imagine. Uh, and they're not used to this. They're not, you know. The you know people say oh yeah freestyle money man it's chump change it's not trust me well even the cheapest artists that I'm talking about the 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 C and D list artists that go on stage probably walk away with more than most people well the average person at least I'll say the average person uh, makes it in about a week so yeah no the money the money's uh, can be pretty significant and you got more of the A list acts or even the the A and B list acts. That um, the money's pretty substantial. So, um, and those acts that have not prepared themselves or are not set up to withstand um, this kind of beating, uh, it can get really bad. It can get really bad, you know. So, and you know, and it makes us think, man. You know, when this is over, what do we do? One of the things that scared me uh, on the news today was they said there's been a huge up, up um, what's it, an uprise of Gun sales, okay? Gun sales. Now, I remember people talk, talking about this <laughs> over the years. You know, of course, you look at them like they're crazy. And they say, yeah, you better arm yourself. You better have some reserve. You better have this. And, you know, some of us don't listen, you know? I listen partially, you know? But this thing kind of snuck up on us. So, uh, but, you know, to to know that there's a, you know, people out there buying guns. What are they? Are they buying to protect their homes? Why would they protect their homes? You know, from people who are trying to come to their homes to take food, to what? To do what? <laughs> you know. <laughs> so it's it's crazy, man. It's 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 really nuts. You know, I'm a felon. I can't have a gun. I can't have a gun. You know, it's a scary part of it. I have a bat, <laughs> some knives. <laughs> Pull out my noon trucks, <laughs> but no guns, man. You know, and um, yeah. Well, no, no legal guns at least. <laughs> no, no, I don't, I don't have anything, man. I just, yeah, I'm, I'm past that. I'm over that. Those days. 
Um, yeah. So, I'm not going to make this one too long, guys. Uh, I'm good. I'm just a little tired today. I got really early, and uh, I really had to do some tracking on that computer, and I did. So, uh, I covered a lot of ground, though. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's so crazy is that I knew where my deadline was and I'm one of them dudes I wait till last minute and just so much went, you know happened that uh, kind of lost sight a little bit you know good thing the book was written already so it's not like I had to start from scratch a oh, book's written I'm just going through it. and I can actually release it as is and everybody will enjoy it um, I'm just going through it I'm seeing you know little things here and there that I would like to change and I'm making those changes so because uh, when the paperback comes out I want it to be right I don't want it to be uh you know, you know, the thing is when you're writing, you know, the beauty with what I'm doing and the way we write is um, I can always update it, you know, so I can do like update the editions. Like, let's say I, I do the books. OK, and I, they're on Amazon. I can go back and redo the manuscript and then re-upload a new version. And then repl- just put the, the covers back on and everything. So that's that's the beauty with nowadays uh, the way we do it uh, it just works out it's not like back in the days back in the days you had to like you had to do these major because it was the machinery now everything's digital but back in the days they used uh, what they call like web presses that's what they they did um, like uh, newspapers with but you remember back in the days you would see machines that made these books you know and they still they still exist those those machines still exist but they're not as popular as they used to be. They're popular with the major uh, publishers, but there are so many independent publishers nowadays and nobody's going to go and press up 10,000 books because that's the only way you would get a discount on the books is if you press, you know, like 10,000 copies. So nobody's going to do that. I know I can't do that. 10,000 books and then put it in my garage and, <laughs> and then you know what happens is you can't sell them, you end up giving them away, putting them in the 99 cent store. So, um, so nowadays for the independent uh, publishers, um, we have print on demand, more you know, uh, digital press, which which is cool. You still got to do the, the only difference though is you got to do like most of the work. So if you're good with computers and you have the patience, that's the key, and you you know how to do uh, formatting, that's where they get you. Because if you don't know how to do formatting on a book, it's not gonna lay in the book the right way, and then you have to pay someone to do it, and they charge a lot of money. You know, so and most people are not going to have the patience and not going to want to do it. So they're going to end up paying people to get it done. So it gets it gets pricey. You got to know what you're doing. I, I've covered a lot of ground. I've uh, I learned how to do a lot of that stuff. And uh, um, and it wasn't to save money. It was to I hate depending on people like whenever I can eliminate any kind of dependency of somebody. I do. I, you know. Um, I've had people that work with me. I still have people that work with me now and uh, they handle certain things, but they handle certain things because I'm just at this point not interested in handling that part. You know, not that I don't know how, I, I do know how. Um, but, um, you know, uh, but other than that, you know, I think the only person I have on board with me right now that, you know, does that is important and that I need is Fernando, is the guy who runs a lot of radio live. So. Um, that's my boy, so you know, he's on board. He's on board for life. And um, but you know, so a lot of the other people that I had on board with me, I you know, and first of all, most of them I taught them their job. So whatever it was that they did, I usually I'm usually the one that showed them how to do it. You know, and then as time went on, I was like, I saw that they just were wasn't into it. it. wasn't even about money or anything like that. Just you know, people get into the music business and they want to play the game and right away they, they expect something. I understand. They expect this whole other world. They expect this this glam. Okay, yo, I'm going to the concert. I'm going to be backstage. Let me tell you something. Nowadays, backstage is the most boring place to be. It's boring. It's lonely. You know, you have all these artists. It's very segregated because you have all these artists in all their own little dressing rooms. And there's basically just them and their crew, like their, their, their tour manager or their road manager or their dancers or their band members, whatever the case may be, or just an entourage, family members that hang out. But everybody's segregated. You know, you step out of the dressing room with your crew and then you pass up 
another crew walking down the hall. Hey, what's up? What's up? And you keep going. So um, after a while, it kind of gets old, you know. So so when people experience that, it doesn't it doesn't live up to what they expected, and they lose interest. And when they lose interest in something, they tend to not do the job correctly. That you can see it. You can see it in the work. You know, I love what I do. A lot of the stuff that I do from my books to even the videos that you guys see me doing, I have a passion for them, which is why I love to do them. And that's why they come out nice, you know. Now, I could go and, and, and get behind a video and really put a lot into it and make this, you know, great, you know, production. But it's not what I'm trying to do. I'm, I, I'm a huge fan of social media. I'm a huge fan of things like YouTube. And I love the realism of just picking up a camera or picking up your phone and filming something. I love it. I love it. There's something so unique about that, you know. Uh, a lot of times when I see something that looks too highly produced, it turns me off. Unless I'm watching it on Prime, Amazon Prime or Netflix, don't show me anything that's, that's really polished like that. It just doesn't, it really doesn't interest me at all, you know. Um, but uh, anybody who's, uh, who, if you guys, some of you guys might even think, uh, not go onto YouTube because you, you, you kind of turn off by the quality. That's because you're so used to watching regular TV and watching movies. But what you gotta do is get your head out of that and realize that what YouTube is, YouTube is a, is a means, you know, just for you guys to know, so YouTube is actually a search engine. A lot of people don't know this, you know? It's a search engine, and it's owned by Google, which is the number one search engine, making YouTube the number two search engine in the world. You think about it. When do you, usually when you go onto YouTube, you know exactly what you're looking for. You're looking for a, po- a particular podcast. You're looking for how to how to install a toilet. I know I did that before. Um, you're looking at. Um, uh, you know, maybe some music. You want to hear a mix. You want to see a concert. You want to watch a music video. So you type in what you want. You know, um, that's what YouTube is. It's a search engine. You know, so and sometimes when you dial in and you get a very raw, someone just basically holding up their phone and documenting whatever it is, whatever it is that they're doing. To me, that is the most interesting. Those are the ones that I watch. Those are the ones that, because I'm so fascinated with the whole idea. Think about it. Every single person on this planet can pick up their phone and document their life. Think about that for a second. Everyone on this planet can pick up their phone and document their life every single day if they want. You know, so think about how crazy that is when you really, really, it's almost like looking in a crystal ball. Now, some of these people that document, they, they kind of, they try to make you see things that are not for real. They try to show you beautiful homes that are not really theirs, you know, incredible cars that are not really theirs. Um, they'll show you when they go on vacation. But those are not the things that, that interest me. What interests me is when Someone picks up a camera and they show me some hardship and they show me a struggle that they're having that they're having and I would like to see them come out of it. That's inspiring to me. That's what I love to see. Anyway, guys, I just want to leave you with that. You know, be cool. Stay safe. Try to stay in if you can. And uh, until next. Well, not next time until tomorrow night. Good night. Freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.